Hi everyone, here's what's bothering me today. So right now the Conservative Party of Canada is having a virtual party convention where they're voting on what kind of things they want to appear in their platform for an election moving forward. And one of the ones that made the news was that a delegation from somewhere in Quebec had wanted to include a motion to have the Conservative Party of Canada officially recognize that climate change is real and needs to be addressed. So some people started to pay attention thinking, oh, is this finally the time that uh, conservatives will wake up to the reality of climate change? And spoiler alert, no. So here's the thing. The delegates for the conservative convention from Eastern Canada, like the Atlantic provinces and Quebec, they all voted in favor of this. The ones from Ontario westward voted against it. All said it was something like 54% of conservatives opposed making climate change, uh, or sorry, a statement saying that climate change is real. 54% of conservatives opposed that. So to be fair, it's not all conservatives who don't understand that this is a very real thing. There's a significant chunk of conservatives who know that climate change is real and want to see something done about it. So that's ostensibly good news to a certain extent. But what's still very damning is that, once again, conservatives have voted against what should ultimately be their own self-interests as far as the party and the election is concerned. The vast majority of Canadians, including a significant chunk of conservative voters as we're seeing right now, believe and know that climate change is real and it needs to be addressed and they want to see government action on it. This is the position of all the other parties, including the separatist Bloc Québécois. But you also have the Conservatives still doubling down on their old ways and their old rhetoric, and yet Aaron O'Toole, the leader, is still trying to build this grand coalition. Oh, look, see, we don't hate immigrants and we, we love all people and we, we should address climate change, but not the way the liberals are doing it. Like he's trying to be a centrist leader. Unfortunately, many conservatives within the party and the voting base for all these different delegates, they don't want anything to do with that, which would again confine them and serve as a shackle of sorts to conservatives in Canada, having to sort of drag them around and keeping them lagging behind the rest of the world, which means Justin Trudeau and the Liberals probably get another shot at power, which a lot of people, rather understandably, don't want. So that's the problem, right? Well, depending on how you want to view the problem. There's plenty of Liberals who uh, rely on the Conservatives as the other power dynamic, and then they wait their turn before they get back in power. This is why Liberals often spend a lot more time attacking the NDP than the conservatives. The conservatives don't like the liberals and know that they're probably going to be the next ones getting into power, but they know that they need to convince, even if they have to lie about it, enough Canadians that they can, through our broken voting system of first past the post, win enough to get into government, either minority or majority government rule, where they then mess around with everything and things just get worse and worse. Thank you, nine years of Harper, for that atrocity. So that's part of the problem. The other part of the problem is that if the Conservative Party wants to have any relevancy moving forward as a federal party and not just a niche values party, it needs to keep up with the times and with the rest of Canadian society. The rest of Canadian society is saying things like, climate change is real, we want social programs and we like having social programs. We're in favor of immigration and we want people to pay their fair share. We want proper you know, investment in public transit and new jobs and new industries because we don't want people not working. This is the hodgepodge of general agreement that Canadians have, including, of course, rather famously, our love of our national health care system. And yet the conservatives either in the provincial sphere or in the, in the federal sphere, talk about how, oh, well, you know, we should open up privatization. And you see now some of these MPs saying 
blatantly untrue and false and misleading information and questioning the use and efficiency of vaccines, it does not set a really good example for good governance as an alternative to the liberals or another party like the NDP or the Green Party. If the Conservative Party wants to avoid political death, they should have voted in favor of this because that would have actually, even if they didn't mean it, it would have gotten a lot more Canadians to vote for them, unfortunately. And another thing that's somewhat in the news, but not as much, is while the Conservatives were voting on this, Aaron O'Toole was also saying how he wanted him and his party, you know, if you put us in power, we're going to make sure that the wealthy pay their fair share. And yet I don't think that that's actually going to be a thing, considering he and the Liberals voted against a simple wealth tax against the super, super wealthy. And it was like a 1% tax increase. It was ridiculously small and affected only a handful of people, but would have raised money to help pay off so much of what the wealthy have reaped from Canada and from Canadian lives. He's trying to say and do that. And yet we're supposed to believe him and his party that don't believe in science and reject climate change and are so stuck in their ways that they would rather be true to that in their base than to actually try and modernize with the rest of Canadian culture and society. The Conservatives had a chance here to actually do something good for once and finally bring all major political parties on board by recognizing climate change as the actual problem and threat that it is. But they didn't. And that's what's bothering me today.